Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. All you brewers, distillers, hobbyists of all flavors, love having you and we're excited to be here as always. Now, today's video is on pulse width modulation. As promised, we did the PID yesterday and this is just another means of controlling heat. It's just a little different. It's another method to get at the same end result. That's really what it is. So remember, we talked about this before. Technique is one thing. Principle is something you don't violate. Okay, now that we're here, let's just get right to it. Now, I had a really good discussion with Steve yesterday. Thanks, Steve. He and I talked for a long time on the phone, and it was really the comparison between using a PID with a solid-state relay and a, an SCR with a pulse-width modulator. Um, and I think we were kind of talking past each other in a way because really it's just two methods to get to the same end result. Thanks, Steve. Um, here is what I have. Uh, I've got pulse-width modulators. Uh, they, they operate uh, really... Yeah, the same principle um, is just a different way of getting there. Uh, I've got one here. This is the 120 volt model. Now watch this. See, I've got a light attached to it. Um, it these are really, really unique because they do. They work a little bit differently. Again, same result, but they work a, a little bit differently than a PID. Since you know, you, we all know that the PID, based on timing with an on-off cycle, has an average percentage of power output opposed to a pulse width modulator, which just modulates the width of the pulse. I don't want to get too technical, but it modulates the width of the pulse so that the average apparent power is constant. Hmm. Follow this. This is really simple. Uh, I've got this thing set at 30%, and you'll notice here I'm at 42 volts. I've got it plugged into 120 volts, but since I'm using a an SCR in here and it's modulating the pulse of that 60 cycle remember we talked about that um, I'm only providing 42 volts to it now you'll notice down here on my amp meter I'm not going to read anything because a 60 watt light bulb which I have right there does not draw enough amperage this does not indicate fractions of an amp and if we use our listen 60 divided by 120, 60 watts, and a 60 watt light bulb divided by 120 equals 0.5. That's the amperage that a 60 watt light bulb is going to draw at 100% power. So it's not going to register on there. Even when I go up to 100%, it'll still say zero. But trust your lying eyes. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that the light bulb is just barely lit. It's, it's dim, and that's only because it's provided 42 volts. Now, with that 42 volts, of course, there is a fraction of amperage that correlates with that voltage. But as we increase it, then you'll notice here, you'll notice that the light bulb starts to get brighter as I increase the power. Now, that's 50% power at 70, uh, 73, 74 volts. And then, of course, I can go all the way up to... Let me go up to, I'm at 106 volts now, 110 volts at 76%. And let me go all the way up to 100%. Just hold it, and it'll scroll all the way up. That's 125 volts provided to the light at 60 watts, and that's about 0.5 amps. So, again, we're not going to read any amps on our amp meter, but you'll notice that the light bulb now. Now, that's exactly what your heating element does, Okay. Your heating element will operate either on a very low voltage or at the very the high voltage. That's really what's going on. So we're, we're making it work at full power or a portion of that power throughout the cycle, depending on what we select. Um, very, very similar to a PID, which does it exactly the same way, only different. Uh, it does it through pulses of on-off and on an for an average over a period of time for a total power output. See how simple that is? I know. Uh, this is, believe it or not, this is really, really rudimentary uh, and it's, it's great for those. There's nothing wrong with this. This is 
equal on footing with any other kind of control. Um, it's just it just takes human intervention to control it. Now, what do we need for this? Uh, I've got. Let me lay this down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to unplug this and turn that light off so it's out of my way. And I've got one set here. This is the one, okay, this is the 240 volt model. Uh, it operates exactly the same way. And I've got that 3000 watt element in this three gallon mighty mini still like we did yesterday. And it took about the same 17 minutes or so to go from 72 degrees to this one shot up over 200 degrees pretty quick, pretty rapid, because I, I wasn't controlling it. I, was, I just had it on at 100%. Now, the other thing you'll notice with a pulse width modulator on 240 volts is the voltage doesn't change. Uh, the voltage doesn't change because you have two hot leads. There's, there's a further explanation for that, but please don't let that concern you. Uh, but in this particular case, since a 3,000 watt element pulls 13, uh, I think it's 13.5 amps at 100% on 240 volts, and again, you can do the math, okay? 3,000 divided by 240 equals whatever that equals is the amount of amperage it will draw at 100%. You see, we can adjust the amperage, and I've got this one set at 13% right now. And the reason it is at 13% is because that's where I set it after it shot up over 200 degrees. Uh, what I want to do now is I wanted the temperature to come back down so I could demonstrate what happens. And I'm at 138.8 degrees. Um, now, the reason I know that I'm at that temperature is because, of course, unlike a PID, this has no feedback mechanism. You have to create that yourself, which is, I just put a thermometer on it. I've got a digital thermometer stuck in the top. So I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to use my fingers, and I'm going to manipulate my power output to try to match a, a, a certain temperature. So if I increase that, and I'm going to go to 25%, and we should notice... Uh, a temperature, there it is, 137.8, 138, 139. So you'll notice that the temperature is starting to come up, and it's coming up rather gradually. And that's a really good way to control your temperature using a pulse width modulator. Now, we could always, and you'll notice I'm drawing three, three or four amps. It all depends on where it falls out. It's three to four amps. Now, I'm going to move this up to, I'm going to show you how quickly this thing reacts to. Let's move up to 50%. Okay, 50% power that's running through by SCR and through into my element. And I'm at eight amps and it's now 153, 154, 155, 156. It's, you see it's starting to progressively go higher quicker. Uh, and the reason for that is of course, now my element is running at half power. Well, half amperage. And so, um, if we turn it, I'm at 177, so now i got to turn it down. Um, I, I wouldn't call that a con. Um, the benefit is, first of all, you've got total control over your system, just like you would any other controller. Um, it's not a con that you have to play with it back and forth, but trust me, you'll find your own sweet spot. Um, and I messed with this earlier, uh, and I played with it for about 30, it took me about 30 minutes, and what I determined was is that right around 35 to 38 percent power I was able to maintain somewhere around 174 degrees. Uh, now you'll notice yeah, it's, start, it's 210 so oh boy I left it up there too far too high too too long let me turn it back down I'm at 17 percent now. Uh, I could tell that I was up there because I've got steam running out. Uh, it happens you know when you, you get sidetracked as I sometimes do. So this is pulse width modulation uh, at its finest uh, and in operation. The only thing you have to do is figure out what is the percentage that operates best in your system. Um, I would recommend turning on at 100% and when it gets up to about 120 degrees and you'll know as well as I do with any still, normally it'll take a while to get to 120, but it'll go from 120 to, to 200 like lickety split. 
So when you get close to 120, I'd start to back off that percentage until you can get a balance and you can work your still, okay? You're gonna have to work your way into it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, Alex from, this is, this is a cheap shot because it showed up yesterday. Alex from Peak Speakeasy Distillers uh, sent me one of these and I wanted to show it to you. Here's what it comes, that's what it looks like when it shows up. Really nicely packaged. What is it? It is a glass parrot. And uh, this thing is pretty nifty. Um, I'm not trying to sell them, but you, look, they're Amazon, they're $39.99. Go figure. But uh, yeah, just type in Speakeasy uh, Glass Parrot on Amazon, and uh, they've got these listed for $39.99. What's really neat is it comes with it comes with a proof and trail hydrometer, and you'll notice that this one is a little bit shorter than your standard proof and trail hydrometer, which is usually about 11 inches or so. Uh, this one's made specifically for this. Uh, these are made in Scotland, I do believe. And uh, the, the difference between the two, this one's gonna be weighted a little bit differently, but it's still calibrated at 60 degrees or Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, and there you go, be careful putting it in there. And there she sits. Um, the only thing you have to do to this, I mean, this is pretty neat, I'd say, because you can kind of see, you know, we always like to be able to see what's happening, and you'll be able to see your spirits float in here. You'll be able to tell what the percent is or the proof uh, instantaneously during the run as it runs out of your tube. Uh, the only thing you're going to do is just put, a, I, I would put a small funnel on the top, and that's where your condenser would drip into. Um, and... Please be very, very careful. Of course, it's glass, so it's fragile. Um, maybe you need two. I don't know. Uh, I'll bet if you bought two of them, you'd never break one. Um, just like hydrometers, you know, if you have two, you'll have two forever. If you have one, yep, it'll break somehow. I share that with you. And until next time, as we always say here, yep, happy distilling.